fantastic. All right. Well, welcome everybody who has been pa waiting so patiently for the beginning of this episode of our still untitled weekly news show that will eventually get a better title than what is that? Gaming, Gaming news, news update. update. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it feels very distant and informal. You didn't even try. I mean, to be fair, I, I didn't have a hand in that. I came up with the whole idea, but I let other people name it, which was my mistake. Right. The difficult um, production thing, you were like, somebody else will handle that. It'll yeah, be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, why would I go to the Washington Post if not to have people handle at least some of my problems for me? Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. No longer a Kotaku, huh? Yep. Every, uh, these are, this is the real world now. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, no, <laughs> things were definitely very easy all the time at Kotaku. Definitely. Um, anyway, but yes, welcome everybody to this week's episode of our weekly news show where we talk about big stories of the week. I am joined, I'm, well, first of all, um, I am Washington Post reporter Nathan Grayson, and I am joined by, I was thinking about this earlier today, what have you not done at this point? You've been a games journalist, you have done all sorts of content creation, you are now also working at Sony Santa Monica on the writing mm -hmm. side of things. So like, what even, what, what do you call yourself at this point beyond your name, which is Alana Pierce? <laughs> well, look, I still call myself a writer and always have because that's what I've always been employed as. So mm -hmm. even if I technically have done a bunch of other stuff and will continue to because my um, absolute lust for learning things and accomplishing things will never die to my own detriment um i will never be satisfied uh <laughs> I, I still call myself a writer because it's the easiest one you know i was hired as a writer at ign i was technically uh hired as a writer at santa monica studio and at rooster teeth you know that was a huge part of my job so it's just the easiest one it's you know that's what i studied that's technically what i get paid for everything else is just my own problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's a good way to view it um, all of our goals are just problems that we have exactly, and eventually, hopefully we'll get over them. Unsatiable problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I thought it'd be good to bring you on because, um, the kind of, I think big news story of this week has been basically this whole thing involving the CEO of game company tripwire stepping down in the wake of a tweet wherein he supported new Texas, uh, anti-abortion laws that are real bad that basically make it illegal to get an abortion uh later than you know six weeks from conception uh which is extremely difficult for Most anyone people to would crack. not know i yeah. some of the stuff that i've the context that i've seen around that is like you'd absolutely know but it's only from dudes who clearly have no experience it's like no right you, of you course would. yeah the same dudes who are making the laws wow what a surprise yeah it's true um but yeah so you were you were pretty vocal in kind of opposing what he said and so to begin with a very basic and kind of obvious question, uh, why did you decide to speak up on this topic? Um, I don't even feel like I was that vocal in my disagreement. Uh, so my, my big thing, that I've tweeted this a few times uh, over the past couple of weeks, um, where it comes to, I never thought anybody would ever ask me about abortion laws throughout my career, but here we are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, I see people talk about, you know, here's what women need to do. And it's often phrased around, here's what women need to do. Here's what, what women should be responsible for. Here's what women, or, or at the very least, people who have ovaries, ovaries or uteruses need to do. And it started to get a little bit frustrating to constantly see that discourse. Some people more blatant the, than others, just outright saying, no, if a woman's having sex, she needs to take the responsibility to avoid pregnancy. Just no mention of men at all. So what I tweeted to the CEO of Tripwire when he said that he... I think it was strongly supported the law um mm -hmm. was you have, a, have it quoted there yeah here let's I see think it was I mean, strongly yeah, fine. supported, right it, it was something like that where is, where is essentially i just yeah. responded to him and said um i assume you've had a vasectomy before tweeting this so yeah. i don't feel like i dunked on this guy too hard or like told him he wasn't allowed to have his views i don't feel like mm -hmm. i did anything like that but my thing was okay for everyone who, who was on my twitter timeline tweeting about again, what women should do, because this does pertain to women, whether you throw that word in there or not, again, mm -hmm. should be using more inclusive language than that. Um, is If you want to prevent abortions, then you can also do something yourself. So why are we only talking about what's on the female side of it and not what's on your side of it, which is if you get a vasectomy, you are going to prevent abortions. This is provably true. 
Um, right. And it's just something that I find to be frustrating to see, like, completely erased from the conversation. And, you know, when they tested male birth control pills, they were considered um, cruel, I think was the word used, due to the side effects, even though the side effects are virtually the same as the side effects that you get from female birth control. Like, I got in an accident in January uh, on a motorbike, and it took me a long time to recover because the birth control that I'd been on for the last several years, which prevents me from feeling pain, uh, it's very specific to helping me not have constant ovary pain ruins my bone density and this is just a thing that i know and then my doctors know and it's like oh you're going to take a really long time to recover and your knee's going to be in bad shape for a long time because you have really poor bone density because of this birth control that you're taking which is preventing you from having constant pain and it's just like okay that's the thing we accept but when they tried to create one for men it was rejected because of side effects that women already deal with every day i just i just wish that there could be you know, if it's if it's the oh, it takes two to tango, then why why is there a responsibility not on two people? Right. Well, yeah, of course, like that that makes perfect sense in a world where the actual goal of these things, right, is to you know arrive at an equitable solution that helps the most people. But I, I mean, dream. It's I can dream, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty transparently not the goal. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm originally from Texas, and so let me tell you. That is a state where a lot of laws get made in very bad faith yeah. and people just kind of go along with it because, I don't know, partisanship. Um, but yeah, I, I especially was interested in kind of getting your perspective on this because I think that one refrain I saw come up in some cases uh, in opposition to like the, the CEO of Tripwire, his name is John Gibson, uh, stepping down in the wake of kind of this controversy and the reaction to what he said is people saying like, oh, well, you know, he, he shouldn't have to like not have his job because of something he said that like is an opinion that doesn't pertain to like game development and, you know, the creation of games. But I think also, as we've seen pretty recently with things like Activision Blizzard, if you have people up top who, you know, participate in various versions of like a male centric culture, um, whether that's like a frat bro culture or, you know, something like, for example, the policing of women's bodies, mm -hmm. that, that makes its way down. You, you don't just end up with like, oh, there's a total disconnect here and like women who work at these studios are unaffected. It's like, no, it impacts the entire culture. And that's so, I true. Mean, like, yeah. They also may not have. We don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I think my, my, I don't know where I land on this. I think my general stance is I don't want somebody to be fired over a tweet in general um especially when them bringing themselves into the conversation and i know i'm living in an ideal world when i say this and it's not the reality um but then bringing themselves into the conversation is allowing them to hear perspectives that they haven't heard they hear about the women who were sexually assaulted and then forced to keep the children and forced to pay for them sometimes from men that they can't even track down so they don't get child support like there are so many circumstances in which this kind of thing is awful that maybe these people just don't know about. Maybe, and then maybe I'm giving it too much faith. But yeah, in my head, you know, I've had people blame me for this guy getting fired because I said, "Have you?" I assume you've had a vasectomy, um, and it's 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 not something I wanted. You know, I did not want this. I would way prefer for someone to, as a result of sharing that stance, take conversation. I mean, he didn't even reply to anyone. He left the tweet there. He he knew that he was going to get a lot of disagreement and then just completely ran, basically. Um, and I would love if we could have a conversation and if, if it could be a learning opportunity and that somebody could, you know, hear some of the experiences that some people have had and are having. And that would be my ideal rather than somebody getting fired. However, if there are a lot of employees that you have that, again, he knew this when he tweeted it, that are very staunchly against something that you've said and something that you stand for while representing the company, there are, of course, going to be consequences. That, right. You know, and you can't avoid well, yeah. it. Oh, good. Um, well, yeah, that was even like kind of pointed to in, um, let's see. Yeah, what uh, Shipwright Studios said prior to when, uh, when John Gibson was let go. Um, but yeah, they said, while your politics are your own, the moment you make them a matter of public discourse, you entangle all of those working for you and with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. God, I love Man Eater though. What a game, you know? It is a good game. <laughs> I was gonna play it this week and I felt weird about it, but Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's true. That it's it is fun to be a shock. It's it's all just really, really complicated in in terms of that. And again, I don't know where I stand on it morally because I always feel like I'm coming from a tremendous position of privilege or or just 
you know, being too hopeful that it's like, well, you know, his his tweet and someone called me out for this, I think probably rightfully. I said what he said was at least on the polite side of the argument. And the person who responded to me, someone I respect very much, who was like, there's no polite argument when it comes to, you know, policing what people do with their bodies and it changes their lives forever right it's like you're absolutely right um and i tried to be like he wasn't mean he wasn't mean spirited and it's like it doesn't matter when that's where the intent comes from and you know i just like flip over this a lot to try to be like my ideal outcome and probably the reality of these situations don't necessarily align and i would definitely have preferred a conversation um not that i work at tripwire or have anything to do with any of this you know uh but it that that would have been what i would have wanted and i what i said is definitely snarky but was also trying to be thought-provoking like mm-hmm. my intent when i say i assume you've had a vasectomy before tweeting about this about what other people should do is definitely with the intent of making someone think wait a minute how would i feel if the law were telling me to get a vasectomy and telling all men to get a vasectomy how would i feel about that you know right. and it, it it just it feels like i didn't expect this to happen did you expect him to get to get fired slash step down I no, not really. I mean, mm. just given the way that like game companies tend to work, I, I think that the 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 event that kind of pushed things in that direction, right, was almost certainly other companies being like, okay, well, we're we're cutting contracts with you. We're gonna no longer work with you. I mean, like, a, as soon as anything impacts the bottom line, companies are just so much quicker to act. Yeah, I, that's I think true. The public outcry on its own would not have been enough to produce this kind of reaction. Um, and right. even then, like, it's one of those reactions that leaves some things in question, like the the person they promoted into the position of CEO is somebody who, you know, has presumably worked with John Gibson for a long time. And like, it would not be a shock if they shared similar views, like, yeah. that's not outside the realm of possibility. It's just that one person has voiced their views and the other person we don't know anything about. It's a very good um, point. Yeah. So I mean, even that is like, not the kind of enormous reaction that I think some people take it to be. Um, but at the same time, like it's still something, and I think it was born of again, you know, it's money after a certain point. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I it, it is also to your point about like you wish it was a discussion. I think that makes a lot of sense, and kind of the issue there is that you know it's a quote unquote discussion that happened on Twitter, and right? Like, but you can't really, really do. I know, yeah. and I I wish you know like I we. I think about this way more often than I should is, you know, everyone talks about uh, the future will be controlled by robots. We already are. Like, people are spending so much time catering everything that they do to an algorithm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I try to spend very little time on Twitter overall, and a lot of it is just people, like, you know, saying the most extreme thing and then becoming more extreme themselves, radicalizing themselves for an algorithm to give them positive feedback. And I feel like we're doing that all the time, and it means, like, the simplest thing on Twitter can be so hard when we had this opportunity where someone was aware that they were openly disagreed with, they phrased it politely. Again, I'm giving him too much credit. I was right Mm -hmm. to be called out on on saying that, but I hope (laughs) that's the only way I can think to express what I'm trying to say versus some of the other tweets that I've seen. Like, is there any world where that could have gone differently on Twitter? Is there a world where we could have, you know, had him be like, Oh, I hear that. Or, or these, and I know this is also an American culture thing that I've heard Australia has changed since I left six years ago, but that people are so partisan and just so stuck in being partisan is so unlikely to change that, I don't know, I, again, I think I'm living in this fantasy world where I, I wish the outcome were, were growth or understanding or empathy and not mm-hmm. just, like, I picture this as this dude being like, I'm out, I'm done, screw it. The, t- the tweet has got mad at me and I'm done. Um, <laughs> the minute there was any, like, pushback rather than him hearing anyone out, and, and I just can't get that out of my head of, like, how did we get here why can't we just be better why can't everyone just be better why can't you think about other people more i guess Mm -hmm. would be the very beginning of all of this which is why why didn't he think about other people more and the responsibility he had more from the jump Uh, but i think that applies to everyone else in some cases too but you know that's not that's not the worst thing it is it is the worst thing in the last week is not john gibson leaving tripwire who will be fine it is still this law being passed and the mm-hmm. tremendous negative impact that it's going to have on a lot of people's lives and, and safety and freedom and comfort, mm-hmm. especially in a state that is protesting my body, my choice where a mask mandate is concerned. Right. Right. The, the, the eternal bit of hypocrisy there that like, you know, it's very tempting to see people say things like that and be like, haha, I got you. Now you're going to have to change your mind because I've revealed, you know, this hypocritical element, of your viewpoint 
But it's like, well, no. I mean, it just reveals kind of, you know, the actual motivations at the heart of any of this, which is, you know, power and control. Yeah. Um, and then also, like, a thing that I've kind of, like, learned to keep in mind about a lot of people who hold very clearly contradictory points of view like that is that, generally speaking, if you talk to any given, like, American especially, they don't necessarily have, like, a unified worldview, nor do they have time to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like in a sort of culture and economy that prioritizes people working all hours of the day and in often cases like working multiple jobs and all of this stuff, a lot of people like just take in a little bit of the world around them and then mostly focus on their own thing. And like another big part, I think, of modern Republican viewpoints is that like it's not a bad thing to have a kind of incoherent worldview. If anything, that shows that you're not too attached to one particular cause yeah. and that you're quote unquote unbiased. And like, does that make actual sense if you break it down? No, not really. No. <laughs> but does it sound good? Yeah, totally. And it sounds. Or it makes you feel that, good is the main thing, right? It's all right. ego in in the end. Yeah, yeah, it is often about just like how you feel, and if you can justify, you know, like your actions or inactions in hindsight, because that's yeah. the other part. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is like just an abhorrent law. Goodness gracious. Like yeah. the, the whole $10,000 reward thing. The, that is disgusting. The The yeah. fact that we could be spending that money on helping people through childbirth or helping with child support. And we're like, nope, let's let you, your the community is a bunch of assassins. They're going to ruin your goddamn life and get paid $10,000 for it. It's unbelievable. Like that is what person thought that was okay. And it, again, it's that they have the money. Why don't you use that on people who need the money? How dare you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, well, it's it's really bonkers because, like, I I think that the kind of broader goal of a structure like that is to instate the sort of climate of, like, hesitance and fear that would come with, for example, actual police ensuring that this wasn't happening. Yeah. But without the kind of illegality that comes with that. You, you True. for a number of reasons, could not have, you know, police in the streets doing this kind of work, and that would be expensive for a government. And they're like, oh, but if we create that potential consequence, if we get people thinking that might happen to them, then they'll just stop doing it on their own. That's a good point. Um, yeah, which is real messed up. But also, yeah. if you want to do some fun reading about the history of the U.S. government, far from the first time that we've done something like that, in the, what, like, late 1800s, early 1900s, U.S. government did a ton of deputizing of, like, local militias to handle problems that were really? a little too messy for them. Yep. I didn't know. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's the wild part about any of this, is that, like, it feels unprecedented relative to like the times in which we grew up, but it's actually all really similar to things that we've done before. If nothing else, we are not an original country. We just kind of play the hits over and over. It's pretty cyclical overall. I see that for sure. Um, But you know, Maneater, it's a great game. Uh, Maneater is a good game. It's a really good game. (laughs) And you know what? I think that probably that shark supports women's rights i like to think so i like the think so yeah Yeah. (laughs) the the shark is a raving sjw (laughs) yeah well i also think that the shark and like even if you want to take like the good faith version of kind of how like republicans might see the world in this case i don't think the shark values human life in any capacity that's true and therefore would not care about the age of a person getting killed instead look at it as how much can this feed me correct yeah uh so. and uh, hey i think dlc just came out for that game so <laughs> we are all the shock <laughs> yeah well and the other important thing to keep in mind in any case like this and i think this is true of like activision blizzard as well is that a lot of people made a game like man eater it was no oh, absolutely like, i mean it CEO wasn't just john gibson that doesn't bother me about over. ceos getting fired he didn't do anything <laughs> right right he, he was definitely just a guy yeah, he just happened to to be there and was probably getting paid millions. He didn't make the game. He wasn't a dev. It's a very very different thing. You know, we could right. we could afford to lose a couple of CEOs, shake things up a bit. Maybe this will make the other CEOs go, "I should be better." Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, again, I think their standpoint will be less. I should be better, and more. I, I should, should be, be quieter. quieter. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, I don't think the world necessarily loses anything when CEOs don't say anything. That is also I, true. I think that'd be neat. Imagine if Elon Musk. <laughs> Imagine if Elon Musk never said anything. I, I think that a lot. He of already got kicked off the board. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't matter to him. He's gonna keep saying stuff. Oh, uh, sunglasses, cats in chat. By the way, that's a great name. Um, says developers spoke out very vocally. That was nice. So yeah, yeah. that that is a cool thing um, to see. And I think that's a thing that you see more and more of too, because like also in the case of Activision Blizzard, for example, you know, a lot of developers have been like, 
uh, we, you know, we speak, we're, we're in favor of like women being treated better at this company and stuff like that. And it also goes back to like, it it helps you keep in mind that lots of people make games yeah, and that in some of these cases, when people are like, I'm never going to play their games again, it's like, well, the developers aren't asking you to do that. And in fact, they work very hard on it. Yeah. Like if the developers are saying, Hey, don't play this anymore. Don't give this company money. That's one thing. But if they're not saying that, then honestly, it's probably just like not even that useful to do because there's no organization behind a bunch of people not playing the game. So it's not going to have any impact. The internet gets very mad at me for it. (laughs) No, that is generally the stance. People don't who work at these companies don't generally want boycotts because they aren't actually helpful. I don't. It's easy for me to say when I've worked at companies that we've had walkouts or, or, you know, I work in the industry. A lot of my friends have been through this stuff, but uh, I don't know why people think that you not buying the next Call of Duty would make them change an internal culture you can't see. Right. Why on earth would they do that? They, they, they would just find better ways to monetize. They would market harder. They would make more games, make mobile games. They're not going to change a company culture that they can't prove. It's just no way. Like, it doesn't benefit them enough to do that. Right. There, there are other ways that we can push to change company cultures, absolutely, but I don't think boycotts work at all that said i do think it's a fine moral ground and i don't want to de- deter anyone from being like you know this is what i feel right doing so this is what i'm going to do i have 100 percent support that yeah. side of it you know if you don't want to support the company anymore i get that just don't do it to try to force change or because you think the devs want it because generally it won't and they don't yeah well um i think that you have to get going right i do and so that was a very good note to end on in my yeah. opinion yeah, and so, thank yeah, you, for if me. you want to take off. Yeah, of course. Thank you for taking the time. I know that you yeah. have a very busy day. And so I appreciate you coming on, even for just a little bit of time that you're able to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, obviously, in the future, um, would love to have you come on again when we get this thing up and running. <laughs> when you have a name. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, totally a name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, have a good afternoon and I will see you later. Yeah. See you around. Bye. Bye. All right. Now it is time for, there we go, for our second segment um, in which we're going to just, we're going to do some React style content, which is a term I love to use because I'm pretty sure like nobody who actually does that type of content says it. They just do it. They're too busy reacting to say React. Also, uh oh, Shannon, are you audible? I cannot hear you. Uh, how about no, now? No, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, I think I must have pressed Whatever the button. Whatever changed. Yeah, it all worked. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, this is intriguing. Um, yeah, so hi everyone. I'm Shannon. I'm just here to crash Nathan's stream. Yeah, well, no, I mean, it's it's the Washington Post stream. Nobody oh, owns true. this. Right. Oh, wait, no, maybe the stream is owned by, like, the people. So not by the Post. It's, it's a diffuse ownership situation. Uh, it's owned by Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Just like everything. It's great. It keeps it consistent. Um, But yeah, so what we're going to do now, um, for those who haven't already figured it out, is we're going to watch the PlayStation Showcase because I think that's going to be a source of a lot of news. I um, have it on good authority, namely Jason Schreier, that this is going to be a pretty interesting PlayStation Showcase and event relative to like every other event that happened this year, which was basically just obliterated by COVID because, you know, Welcome to 2021, the sequel to 2020. Yeah, I mean, PlayStation 5 still needs a lot of like better games to convince people to to buy it again this holiday season. And hey, it's interesting that you say it needs better games. I I was under the impression that it just didn't have any. It could use <laughs> even one game. Uh, well, it has like a handful of games, so it could definitely use mm. more. Although Xbox is in worse shape. I, I remain skeptical that the PlayStation 5 has games. Um, and you can quote me on that. In any case, uh, yeah, let's see. So in chat, Jamali said, is this the new Saints Row I keep hearing about? Um, I don't know, it could be part of the showcase, but I'm guessing that Sony's gonna be focused on things that are more PlayStation specific. I don't know. I actually don't really know exactly what to expect out of this. Yeah, this is like a hype reel with like Michael K. Williams, RIP. Wait, really? Yeah, is I think I saw him in there. I did, I think. There are a lot of people in this. They, this is, um. A little bit different from you know what I normally see on a show like this because this is real people. How 
right. Okay. It's not video game people. You don't normally see real people. No, never. Every time I do, I'm deeply disturbed. <laughs> like, who oh, are you? No, what are you? Oh, God. That must be an experience. Um, I think I saw Horizon Zero Dawn in that. Yeah, Astro Ryan, Boy. President and CEO yeah. of Sony Interactive Entertainment. Let's Welcome see. To the PlayStation um, at PlayStation, we believe okay, in Jim Ryan. Boundaries. And setting the benchmark. Oh man, everybody's favorite guy. Excellence in entertainment. Of all the guys, he's the one of them. <laughs> he's the man. The new technology in but, yeah. PS5 enables Let's see, actually, to echo the question that our own chat already. Let's see. Immersive and compelling worlds. <laughs> showcasing Sunglasses, cats, said censorship in chat. Democracy dies in We've darkness. We've never been more grateful. Oh wow. Yeah, that's it. Of course. Oh no. So thank you for allowing Most us fact time about to that, share some uh, significant updates. Was invented by Jeff Bezos as well. <laughs> So, uh, so it's very consistent with our theme. Let's some new and amazing games. Yeah, he owns our stream. He owns the motto. Yeah. Let's see, Sunglasses Cat says, you want the PS5 Pro? Yeah. I I would like a PlayStation 5 at all. I still don't have one. So, I mean, actually, this if is whoever is giving the main presentation is just going to come out, like, they should just say, like, Nathan so Grayson, safe. here is your PlayStation. Let me... <laughs> DM me a good address to send it power. to. And I'll be like, cool, man. Now they and I'll be like talking to the computer screen and be talking back to me. It'll be very normal. Yeah, this is probably why you think there are no games on PlayStation 5, right? Because you don't own one, so you can't check. Um, I, I would counter that I am a journalist and therefore have no bias in any direction toward anything, and I've never had an opinion. So, yeah, eh, that doesn't sound right. Okay, so you also have never had a Xbox My, or... My motivations are entirely pure. Yeah. Sure. Yep. I stand by that. Let's see. Star oh, I oh, think yeah, that, was, this, this. that was Star Wars. Uh, we yeah, just looks like Star Wars. Also, I'm in like a weird situation because the, the, the broadcast of this thing is on my other screen. So I have to like look in a weird direction. I, I think I'm also it's... doing that. I don't know if I'm looking like towards you or away from. I don't I can't tell which way is which. Yeah. But... Nothing really matters. Oh, but yeah, okay. So wait. This is from. Oh, Astro. this is cool. This is giving me like Scarlet Nexus vibes with the tree. Oh, wait. Is it. Oh, this is the Kotor re release, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to see Star Wars is back. Or the, rather, the Kotor is back, because. That game rules, obviously. It's one of my favorite RPGs. Though I haven't played it in a lot of years, so maybe I don't like it anymore. Who knows? <laughs> maybe you can find out when you finally get a PlayStation 5. In several years. <laughs> yeah, I wait, just really like her uh, leggings. They're really shiny and green. I'm gonna fix something for myself really fast, which is that I feel like I am watching the stream in slow motion. And so counter that what i'm going to do is just pull it up on my end and then i'll watch it in fast motion <laughs> on my own screen i have the captions on it says connecticut's nobody which is not at all what they're saying at all <laughs> Ooh, this game does look solid though yeah i i don't know what is it it might be a new ip i'm not sure yeah it has a very like platinum games type of vibe to it with the combat. Oh, I think I could play those. And then, huh? This is a subway station. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> but yeah, it looks neat. It looks kind of like an action near, near almost. <laughs> It has some near vibes and like kind of the environments and the color palette. Yeah. I like how the monsters are always like the same kind of squid tentacle monster thing. Yeah, squids have not been having a great time of it recently. Oh. Our own boss, Mike, just said Connecticut is somebody, damn it. <laughs> Thanks, Mike, for your contribution. Yeah, right. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, That's not what this game said. So. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Um, James Jackson just said, I'd love to own a PS5. If only I could buy one. You and me both. I oh, hey, like, hey, James Jackson. <laughs> I, I'm pretty over not owning a PlayStation 5. I don't even really want an Xbox that bad. Because
because like I, I have a PC and a PC can basically just like I have access to Game Pass and everything else through that. Don't so, let you know. Microsoft hear you say that. Uh, unfortunately, I was actually, while saying that, also on the phone with Microsoft. I didn't oh, mean no. to say that to them. I thought I had them on on silent, but I didn't. So they're oh, just no, like super talking. mad now. Yeah. Yeah. They were on mute, but you're not on mute. That's too bad. Oh, hey, Mob Lord, how's it going? That's a person that I know. Um, let's see. I think that the. Uh, the thing that would convince me to get a PS5 is that they offer a true Game Pass alternative. Yeah, right? Like, I, I think that Sony could definitely stand to do something along those lines because, like, Game Pass is um, so far ahead of the game in so many ways. Like, it's going to be, you know, it is, I think, on track to be the Netflix of video games. And I think that it doesn't really have much in the way of actual competition. So it kind of wins by default, which is wild because like you would think everybody would be gunning for that throne. It just makes sense. Oh, it's Project Eve. Okay. Cool. Okay. It's from here? Wait, Project Eve? What is, who's making that? Uh, well, I was looking at the title, not the bottom where it said who was <laughs> making that. So I, we have to like scroll backwards. Oh, it just says Sony <laughs> on okay, the bottom. Well, great. I, I love, I, I love that. Okay, Here, let's box. see. Let's do there some. Let's do some online digging. Dragon Project Boy. Eve. Has yeah, returned. yeah. So, Jim Wally saying like it was Yoko Taro vibes, right? Um, Project me. Eve. It's from the Shift Up Corporation, a developer I've not heard of before. Hmm. Yeah. But I think it was already announced to some degree. Oh yeah, yeah, it definitely was. It has a lot of news articles from way before this. Huh. Was not following that. Oh well. Anyway, Borderlands, which yeah, I think we already knew about this DLC, didn't we? Yeah, there's probably a lot of news that we've already seen for yeah. this one. Yeah, this is pretty clever though. I, I like the aesthetic and the vibe, the kind of tabletop thing they're going for. Yeah, and the art. Yeah, it seems like it's having a lot more fun than Borderlands 3 did. Like Borderlands 3 had jokes and stuff, but you know kind yeah. of played it safe and did the same things as Borderlands typically does. Yeah, I'm a fan of the um, giant soda river. <laughs> and like, yeah, this is definitely Borderlands. This is absolutely, positively, the borderlands yes, Borderlands that I've seen in quite some time. Yeah. Where is she now? It's a. I, I played Borderlands 1 and 2 quite a bit. I didn't get super into 3, unfortunately. Yeah, it's Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Okay, this was announced a little while back. Looks neat, though. March 25th, because. Probably because of COVID, if we're being real. You ready, newbie? Yeah. So next, next year, maybe? Or is this is probably coming out later this yeah, year. Yeah, it's coming out next year. It's in March. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, trailer over. All right, what do we got? Yeah, oh wait, now I might be ahead of where you are on the stream. Oh, really? Or how yeah. did you do that? I mean, I'm just watching on on YouTube. Are you watching on Twitch? Is it faster there? Uh, yeah, Twitch is faster. Okay. Twitch is generally a good 10 to 15 seconds faster. It's the secret stream watching meta for these kinds of things. All right, I will yeah. be there. I, I just... <laughs> Borderlands baby metal, exactly. That rules. Actually, man, that'd be really good. It's like, I, I feel like Baby Metal should do the soundtrack to some video game. I won't turn down another game with Ashley Birch. Yeah, me neither. Ashley Birch is a cool person. I, I've had the honor of knowing her for a number of years now, and she is extremely nice and extremely cool. Oh, it's the Holland Tunnel, and you know that because they're declaring it. Are we on the same part of the stream now? Are we like synced up? Uh, who knows? Anything is possible. I, I can't really see purple, what you're watching. Purple blob right now. Oh yeah, some purple stuff happened. Now we're zooming okay, out great. from somebody. All right, perfect. Yeah. Now let's see. This is a game. Yeah, this is a game Sony showed off at what E3. Mm, is it? Is it Redfall? No, no. 
Redfall was epic, right? Or not? Yeah, wait. No. Redfall's not epic. Redfall's arcane. Yeah, but um, I... No, this is a... Uh, Sony revealed this a little while oh, ago. Okay. Yeah, it's this one that has like this cool kind of Warframe style movement system. You? Oh yeah, it's definitely not Redfall. We do like a lot of jumping and flipping. Yeah. Yeah, see there it That's is. That's really cool. Like they, they super, they didn't rip off Warframe, but they clearly took some inspiration here in terms of the movement system. But also, yeah, uh, Forspoken, there we go. Um, okay. But yeah, like every every game should rip off Warframe's movement system. And like, I, I fully, truly, unironically mean that. They, okay. There's no game with movement that feels better than Warframe. This is going to be amazing on the PlayStation 5 controller. Just like, well, you wouldn't know this, but it's like very smooth already with Miles Morales and Spider-Man. Well, okay. I'm sorry, I was taking a drink of water so I couldn't react to that fast enough. But yeah, it's a way to rub it in my face, I guess. You wouldn't know this, I mean. But, <laughs> no, but, uh, but yeah, like as the more games come out and like developers can work with the actual like haptic system that we've written about before, I think that they can actually get like more vibrations in there and like make the games more epic mm -hmm. so. yeah yeah no it's a cool if underutilized form of control i i think that uh my my main experience with like haptics and games control and game controllers is like valve products the the steam controller was kind of a swing and a miss but the um the the controllers for the for the uh valve index their current vr headset are really nice like just feels super good to use and like is a really good way of kind of tactilely understanding the world around you um mm -hmm. in these very subtle ways it's it's really neat it's hard to describe like anything involving vr you tell somebody like oh man i played this vr game and it was so neat and then they're like can you explain why and you're like absolutely not no yeah yeah i don't i mean i am in vr sometimes but uh it makes me dizzy and i know you have to build up like uh, endurance for that Oh really? You actually get like motion sickness from it? Yeah, I think it's because I was touring like a college for a potential story and I was like, I'm spinning around in circles now, I'm really dizzy. Um, otherwise I probably wouldn't have that. This is Rainbow Six Extraction, I already saw this yeah. at the Ubisoft yeah, this has been... showcase. Yeah, this was announced, or this was announced a while ago, it was originally uh, Rainbow Six Quarantine and they're like, no, never mind, that's a bad idea for a name. <laughs> they renamed it. I wonder and why. they delayed it to early next year, I believe. It was originally going to come out, like, next month, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's kind of one of the many, like, they, they're like 40,000 Left for Dead, like, games coming out soon, and this is one of them. It's co-op where you fight against a bunch of hordes of enemies. Yeah. Um, if you uh, go on our launcher YouTube channel, scroll down. There's me reacting to this exact video, from, like a couple <laughs> months ago. And it's the same stuff. I don't know what else there is to add to this. Yeah, you could actually like watch both of. You could watch this right now and also that video next to it and like see which reaction is different or better. You're mm. like, mm, I don't know. The one from a couple of months was kind of more exciting. I think that we've, yeah. we've fallen off a bit here. I I think so. Maybe. Just like. I, I was blown away. Now I'm like, okay, I've seen this. Okay, it's next year. Yeah, yeah, it's early next year. Also, uh, in chat, sun sunglasses guy just said, gotta have enough meetings in Facebook Ocu in that Facebook Oculus program to build up endurance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the just first day you're doing that. it, it's like you're in a like rocky training montage. You're just like sweating and you're exhausted. And you're like, I can't keep this headset on any longer. And like several montages later, you're like, I don't leave VR anymore. This is my world now. Yeah, I, I'm it's just a very stuff. player one all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, is that like the ultimate? Oh, this is probably for the Alan Wake remaster, mm -hmm. um, which was announced earlier this week. And which is a neat thing because like, I shamefully never played Alan Wake. I have played Control, I have not played Alan Wake. I know they take place in the same universe. Um, yeah, Control is really good. Well, I'll say. Yeah. I have been wanting an excuse to play this, and if they're remastering it, then there's my excuse. I think you just volunteered yourself for this, too. Oh, wait, to, like, to review it or something? Yeah, probably. I have a fundamental opposition to reviews, but I can find a way to write about it. Yeah. Oh. Scary figure in the dark. I squeezed the flashlight like my life depended on it. Yeah, that tends to be what Alan Wake is about. <laughs> Scary that. figures, and then yeah, like the the whole mechanic of using the flashlight to weaken enemies, so then you can mm. actually do harm to them. 
I mean, it's neat. It, it was a cool conceit at the time, even if, like, I think I remember reading that the action was kind of a little bit wonky. Um, but yeah, as some people in the, I, in order to break my own brain right now, right, I'm watching this kind of on our stream and then also on Twitch. So I'm looking at both chats, just splitting my mind in half. And people did point out, like, it kind of looks a little bit, like, it looks like the original. I mean, I'm sure that they've up a lot of assets and, like, it actually looks quite a bit nicer. Yeah. But it's sort of in that uncanny valley of, like, where playing it on, in, like, max resolution on PC already looks pretty good still. And it's, it's like, how much can you really improve a game like that in a remaster? Mm. Yeah, if it hasn't been that many years since the remastering. Um, Hello, Franklin. Almost, like, no point except to make you buy it again. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, of course, that's, like, yeah, that's the whole meta at this point, right? Everybody's just re-releasing their games over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. But I will say that recently, like, playing Yakuza Kiwami Remastered, like a 2005 game, remastered to 2016, it looks so good, and I forgot that I bought the remastered version, oh, so yeah. I was like, why, are, why well, is the graphics so good? <laughs> I mean, they, so the, the Kiwami games, I'd almost call it, like, they are close to being remakes, right? Mm. Like, they, they did some remasters of the later Yakuza's earlier this year, and those are closer to just like, you know, we up things a little bit, but we didn't put that much work in. But like the amount that they added to the Kiwami games is like, they're just inherently way better. And they clearly took a ton of work to make. That um, is true. Yeah. yeah. So it's a yeah. little bit different, but it, it also goes to show you how much like variance there can be in what we call a remaster. Yeah. 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 It's James Jackson. So the next thing you know, they'll just port Skyrim. Exactly. Is this we, Thanos? We, uh, this is, um, oh, this is, what's that one from, um, ah, it's a Bethesda published game. Um, Ghostwire, Tokyo. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. the game that we're seeing right now. Tokyo Recon? Um, it was the one that had, uh, what's her name? The, uh, the Japanese developer who has since moved on from working on this game, but, like, made a splash at E3. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, I remember her. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> yeah, so I think this yeah. is the first time we're seeing even an inkling of what it will actually play like. It looks like it's a first-person thing where you use kind of like psychic telekinetic hand powers. Yeah, I'm extremely into this game. Wow. Yeah, it looks really neat. Might even be kind of scary, but we'll see. Well, this doesn't look scary at all. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm never frightened when I step into voids and encounter creatures with weird masks that have like mascara tears running down them. Yeah, it's that's... Normal. It's part of my I... daily experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally um, th a game like this wouldn't scare me, but I think there's like a little bit more horror than usual. Still your fear. Um, yeah. But yeah, oh yeah, going back oh, to the Okay, maybe that there. one. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the woman with full of teeth on her face. That could be kind of scary. I mean, no, I mean, again, totally normal. I think I know her. Like, I, I think that I see her like, you know, around my block when I go to the corner store. She's your neighbor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've never talked though. Hmm. Yeah, kind of a bummer, but you know, world's so fast moving these days. Who has the time? <laughs> oh yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, the the former lead on this game who left Bethesda yeah. not that long after it got announced, weirdly, was a uh, is Akumi Nakamura. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who is gr also a great follow on Twitter, by the way. If you want, if you want a cool person to see, yeah. just talk about stuff. I think I caught her GDC talk, uh, like maybe years ago nice oh yeah so now we're on to guardians of the galaxy okay. which you know we'll see about this one i i yeah. think that avengers has not given people high hopes for marvel games that are kind of actiony and shooty yeah uh, oh you can kind but... of see the graphics here um well in the cutscene you can't really tell but the gameplay yeah. doesn't look that that great yeah, especially like because of their choice to just only have you play as Star Lord, who is like from a powers perspective far and away the least interesting member <laughs> True. of of the Guardians. Oh, that really oh, so sucks. So there we go. Wait, dog. Let me play as the dog. What's wrong with Yeah, I want to play as Groot. You know. I I want to I want a like buddy co-op game where it's just the dog and Groot, and those are the only characters. Neither of them can directly communicate with each other because they don't speak English, but they have to like, you know, sort of through body language and Groot saying, I am Groot, find a way to cooperate. Yeah, that would be a much better uh, version of this, unless this surprises all of us somehow. It could. No, I mean, I, I think that the other problem that they have here 
Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know why that's funny to me. Uh, anyway, the the other problem that I have with this one is the same one that I had with the Avengers, which is like, who are who are these people? I I don't know these people. Like Star Lord is clearly not Chris Pratt. Not that that's a problem. I'm fine with that part. But like the other characters don't really, you know. When you have this established cinematic universe and then a bunch of characters who look like them but only kind of like them, it's just, yeah, it's too uncanny valley. It's weird. Yeah, I think that's everyone's problem with, with uh, these games. It's no, like, I'm pretty sure it's just mine. As I understand it, I'm fairly certain it's just me. Okay, so everyone else is going to go out there and buy this for sure. I think they, they have no problem with this. Yes. Also, wow, Washington Post Gaming said, um, it's a raccoon. I, I can't figure out if that's referring to the dog. That we definitely saw or if it's referring to the fact that like a raccoon it just looks like a raccoon not like some actor but in oh it's case, not a dog okay no there was a dog in there for sure yeah there was a dog yeah you're saying the dog is a, the dog is a raccoon now i i have seen dogs before i know what they're like hold and to this is, whoa yes, this is vampire the masquerade uh, I think it's a multiplayer game that just came out. Yeah, the like Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is already out and playable and free. And uh, you know, cool. if it's the thing that you want to do, you can you can play it. Now I think there's just been so many Battle Royales at this point, but at least you can um, sneak up behind them and eat them. That's exactly. <laughs> Man, that's what I think in most games should aspire to include the option to no matter what's happening even if it's just like a scene of dialogue sneak up behind him eat him <laughs> yeah they're like i mean they could even be your friend or something but you're like hey i'm gonna go go ahead and eat you yeah oh i see so it's not on ps5 yet so it's already out on pc um i, I think it came out earlier this week even like very recently um, but yeah, it'll be out on PS5 later this year or something. And then, oh, here's Deathloop, Welcome to the Eon program. which will be out sure very soon. Deathloop will be out, what, next month? Your health, your enlightenment, yeah. Your yeah. Yeah, so TBH, like, sure, this showcase has been fun and all so far, but like, um, I, I was led by a certain Jason Schreier to believe that this was going to be wall-to-wall -wall crazy stuff and so far it hasn't been now i say this because the universe loves to prove me specifically wrong and so everything after this point is going to be great now because i just doubted the assessment that this will not be great yeah i think with all the hype that's been out there we can probably say that you, you're going to be wrong but we'll see yeah <laughs> sure a lot of loop based games lately yeah, I mean, time loops are neat. They, they're an interesting conceit that also narratively justifies the fact that you never stop dying. Oh, game is out next week, says Mike. Oh, really? Yeah. Dang. Alright, well, I gotta, like, change my plans, because I really want to play this. I'm a big Arcane fan. The, the, um... The, the Dishonored games are some of my favorites of the past handful of years, so mm -hmm. anything that looks pretty dishonored -y, and this definitely does, uh, is appealing to me. I just want to say, like, you know, a purpose of nothing, but, um, they're wasting a lot of bullets. They're just, like, they've already killed the person, and they're using, like, five more bullets to destroy their whole body, disintegrate them. What was the point of that? I Ammo is not a precious resource. Okay. Anyway, rant over. <laughs> well, you know, when it when it comes out, you can play the game in a very like conservationist fashion. Yeah. Okay. You can use no bullets, which actually is like one of the main problems that I have with the Dishonored games is that it all, it always feels better to like the the games seem to incentivize stealth, and so you don't use like a lot of your cool powers or to your point like ammo in your weapons. Okay. Um, no. I mean, so I am interested to see how this game incentivizes more action-oriented play. Yeah, so I played a lot of like Doom Eternal, like my cells to uh, conserve. Like sometimes you don't even have any ammo. So wait, in Doom Eternal, in the game <laughs> about shooting things as much as humanly possible to the yeah, point of absolute excess. Well, you don't have bullets until you kill more, and then you have to like wait. It's a, I mean, it's a cycle. you gotta like drop things open and like use your abilities to get more ammo out of enemies, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. It is about conservation, if you think about it. You, you have to, yeah. like... It's a galaxy brain pig. Revisit it to think. <laughs> Doom Eternal is actually about conservationism, saving the environment. Yeah, it's about climate change. I knew it. I mean, it takes place on a terraformed Mars. There you go. What else do you need? Also, what is this? What are we zooming in on here? It's lost, lost, lost. Some kind of a monolith. Yeah. So it's looking, it's looking spooky. Okay. Kid a kid amnesia exhibition presented by Radiohead and Epic Games. Radiohead. What? <laughs> what? Coming in November. Oh, oh is that God. just like a Radiohead like concert in Fortnite? No, right? No, it can't I, be. It, may, it doesn't look like Fortnite. I mean, I guess it could be. Also, hello, L L Rose. Is that how to pronounce your name? I I don't know. Um. I think you got it right. Yeah, probably. I do my best with what I'm given, and that is a very bad ability to pronounce names, so. <laughs> but yeah. Now, okay, so what is, wait, this feels like it's already been shown or announced before. I mean, it also has one of those art styles that just like, you know, is charming, but could also be in like any game. Yeah, this is also the most peaceful, like happy game we've seen out of all. <laughs> I know, right? And then suddenly, like, somebody gets decapitated, and it's like, a concert experience from Radiohead. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so far it's just been a lot of murder. Now we're getting into, the, like, the dog. Oh, shit! Playable dog. Okay, it's playable crab. Dog. Never mind, I'm really into this game now. Oh, that turtle was winking at us. How cute. Yeah, that means that it knows something we don't. We can't trust it. Um... And then, yeah, I just saw, like, a Breath of the Wild-style hangbiter mechanic, which, as ever, every game should steal. Have that, have the movement from Warframe, and you've made the perfect game. Hmm. I think you're missing a few things, like, um, spiderwebs, or... I, I'll allow spiderwebs. Yeah. If you're talking specifically about, like, Spider-Man-style movement. We can have yeah. that, too. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you have to also be able to eat people from behind. Oh, you're right. How could I forget? Oh my god. Wow. Well, yes, yeah. okay. So in the, in the process of watching this showcase, we're also going to build the oh, ultimate video game. Yeah, sounds like it. Oh yeah, you can pet the crab. Wow. You can pet the crab. <laughs> we just okay, tried that what is this life. game called and when can I have it? Because it's, called... it's got everything I want. <laughs> yeah, it's called Chia. With like, it's like Chia Seed, but with a T at the front. Yeah. Well, alrighty. Is that all? No, no. Okay, PlayStation Studios. Oh. The biggest pirate treasure of no, they're just gonna show us. Is this a sizzle reel? No. This is like a compilation type of thing, I think. Uh. Remastered for. Oh, uh, the and PC. There we go. All right, Uncharted on PC. Mm -hmm. Dang. I mean, I, I'm going to take the unfortunate stance that I don't actually like the Uncharted games that much, but this is still exciting. And if there's any way to get me to play them, or play the ones I haven't played yet, um, it would be this. I guess I'm going to see. I have not played three or four, so. I'll do it. I'll play some Uncharted. Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, so... It's our official stance on... Yeah, why not? Yeah, I will, I'll play anything, so um, that doesn't actually mean anything about the game's quality. <laughs> oh, well, fantastic. I'm Herman Hulst, head of PlayStation Studios. PlayStation Studios, at its heart, is a diverse... Crab petting simulator. Storytellers. At our collective of triple okay, so yeah, I, I kind of figured this might be an issue. Everything yeah, so in, in chat, story. not sure if it's just me, but Nathan and As Shannon seem to be seeing the stream several seconds before I do. Yeah, it's because we're both watching it of live on a different broadcast a than is the one on the actual YouTube channel because what? Oh, okay, no, no, no. We got switched over. Yeah, okay, good. It should be, it should be fine now. It's fixed. Okay, cool. Yeah, here's hoping. Advanced gaming. 
while always also, uh, just to give you a peek behind the curtain, I'm going to go ahead and ask a question to the person running the show. Um, do they have volume on their end? Do viewers have volume? Okay, because I'm going to... And if I turn on my own volume, will that also go to them? Damn it. Okay, well, I guess I just won't then. I have no idea what anybody is saying. Oh, you so can't hear them. Like, sort of... Um, type every a full transcription of everything people say on the stream in the chat then you know i, I would appreciate that don't actually do that <laughs> i guess i could just read it to you you didn't miss anything they're just saying some stuff that i also wasn't like really oh, okay to. well that's fine then oh great more murder oh that's wolverine, wolverine. Time for, oh okay another marvel game but it's not hugh jackman right Probably not. No, it's not huge jacked man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not what I said. For sure. Oh, flip any digital. This means Gran Turismo. Yeah, okay. get ready for them cars. You heard of cars? We'll get ready for like more better cars. Yeah, this is uh, really Jamali, good. For... No, I don't think that was Marvel XCOM. I think that we, that already got, uh, that, that's Midnight Suns, which is going to come out next year. Whereas, uh, yeah, that was a Wolverine game from Insomniac, correct? Which is quite an interesting development because they've done a good job with Spider-Man. Yeah, that could so be really fun. You, you give them Wolverine, and presumably that will be good, too. Yeah, I yeah, would be wow, excited to try that one. We, we've got a lot of Marvel games now. So yeah, there's Spider-Man, there's this Wolverine game, there's Midnight Sun, there's Guardians of the Galaxy, there's Avengers. And then like, all the mobile games that you can't name that are like out there as well oh yeah watch me try the okay. hulk maybe <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I, I can't even name them i actually went to a bunch of events for them and I, I can't even tell you what they are called let's see i believe there's marvel's dc's calendar man that sounds right to me oh okay. i don't know where you pulled that one from but okay um, hey, i've been watching a lot of the the harley quinn cartoon is the answer yeah figures uh, oh, Mercedes-Benz and Gran Turismo. Um, so, this game will be good for uh, benchmarking PlayStation 5 for like, yeah. like technical purposes. Like, is this yeah, for being how like, how, is it? How, how good can they make the cars look? Yeah. I mean, the cars look pretty good. I would say those are some like decent looking cars. Oh, you can drive around Lower Manhattan, which you can't really do very well in real life. So. <laughs> yeah, finally you can live out the ultimate video game fantasy of <laughs> yeah. driving in Manhattan. <laughs> Hmm. I, I also very much enjoy the idea that people are watching a Washington Post stream and getting New York jokes. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody else. Um, all of our coworkers will be like, I can't relate, but okay. People yeah. are going to come into chat and be like, oh yeah, are you a real Washington em Post employee? Then name some streets in DC. Oh. Um, be like, games up. Main street. Give up. One imposters. <laughs> Center street. <laughs> yeah. George Washington Boulevard Avenue. That's totally a thing. Has to yeah. Be. I'm really into this song too. I don't know if you can hear it at all because I absolutely cannot. Okay. <laughs> it's it's just like techno music. Okay. But it's a nice. I, beat. I would I would really enjoy if they did the whole like video game trend of a very slow and sad cover of a normally upbeat song, but to this footage. Like high octane <laughs> racing and then just like uh mad world. Oh my god. Yeah, slap some filters yeah, over it. Wanna drown my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you should do. Just sing on this stream. That's like yeah. the stream. That'll be a great time. Oh, now they're all gonna list they're literally all listing. <laughs> oh thanks. We brought this we on really, ourselves. We needed that, thank you. Uh yeah. totally what I wanted to see. Tell me more streets. I need more streets. Feed me streets. Oh my god! Oh, hey, Spider-Man with Doc Ock powers. Wow. Hey, is this more Spidey DLC or is this going to be a sequel? Wait a minute. Are they doing I'm like a full Miles is. Morales game? Please. I, I mean, he's there. Give the people what they want. If they make a third Spider-Man, it'll be really good. I mean, this is clearly a 
Yeah, I think I'm guessing this is a full sequel. That this is probably the the second Spider-Man game because Miles Morales is like an expansion, right? Mm, it was its own game too. I think. Yeah. But what do you? Hard to say what it was. <laughs> was it a game? Was it an idea? Oh, Venom. <gasps> Venom. Right. Okay. Venom was one of my favorite. Okay, Spider-Man Two. There we okay. go. Oh, this looks okay. This is this looks amazing. This looks very good. Oh, we have to wait two years. Yeah. Right. Of course. Maybe Man, after four years. Three years. All Marvel. Like, so much yeah. of the showcase has been Marvel stuff. I this mean, it is. makes a degree of sense given that like Sony and Marvel work together even for the Spider-Man movies. But yeah. I mean, that's really a good point. Like, maybe at this cultural moment that we're in are we just all really tired of marvel like do we even want any more marvel oh definitely <laughs> yeah and i mean i'm i'm super done with marvel already and oh it's got a board time. okay oh he looks so angsty yeah Sad man dad. it would be really neat if we could learn more about this game if only we'd had a sony santa monica employee on earlier who oh couldn't talk about this at all uh yeah i should have asked I oh, know she she Alana to to be clear for everyone still here from the earlier segment Alana could not talk about this game. Uh, she she is not currently authorized to do so. Um, and it was kind of a coincidence honestly that I decided to bring her on the show on the day that there was also a Sony showcase that involves God of War. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay, now yeah, you know. Your disclosure. I don't want to fight oh. Uh, Oh no, the boy doesn't want to fight anymore. He just wants answers here, in case you couldn't hear that. <laughs> yes, please narrate and do voices. Please do voices. Okay. Like, do your Kratos impression when he talks. Oh god, okay. Well, I'd recognize that. I'd recognize that Daryl expression anywhere. And then his head is on his butt now. Okay. <laughs> what if there was someone who could help us? Hmm. The old god of war in his lands. Honestly, his voice is so deep, I couldn't even hear him. He's like, really deep down there. Wow. Hey, his voice is now outside of the range of human comprehension. <laughs> yeah. Only dogs can hear him. He's and like an earthquake. Like, I don't know what you're saying, man. I'm a dog. <laughs> oh, it's squid. Man, that's gonna help oh, squid count. Okay, okay. The, bo the boy is like, yeah, of course, squid. But like, the boy is like, I'm tired of war. I just want to help people. He is not the <laughs> That's a little on the nose, isn't it? I mean, the game is called God of War. <laughs> it's not called God of Helping People. Please, boy. Get with it. Um, yeah, I, I, I would play that game, though. God of Helping People. That would be great. Oh, yeah. So I think he just turned around and he was like, no, boy. No. Man, that's rough. It, it would be very rough to be Kratos' son. I mean, like, we kind of already learned that from the first game. But like, you know, Kratos is just does, doesn't strike me as being super good at this whole dad thing. Mm -hmm. He has he, a lot he of is, issues to work through. Yeah, well, also his job title is, it, it, well, it's not really God of War. He killed multiple gods of war, but you know, that's basically who he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> are you coming? Are you coming with us? with us? Wait, I should say, are you coming with us? There we go, that's the one. <laughs> stick with that, stick with that. You got him now. But then he didn't answer, so... Ragnarok! Okay, so this is important. It is officially called Ragnarok. Yeah. Because for a minute, they insisted that they had not given it an official title yet. And everyone was calling it God of War Ragnarok. And then I think Cory Barlog was like, Now, now, we never said it was called that. But and clearly like, it was. Right, no. it's like, well, obviously it is, though. Come on yeah. now. Yeah. Some of those yeah. leaks you just like you just lied about, but it's already out there. Why not just submit to it? Yeah, exactly. And so I'm not sure if now they're gonna switch over to the the portion of things where they're gonna do like updates on games uh, outside of the main presentation. I, I think that's what they're doing now because they said more updates and like did a little countdown. Yeah, so that was the end of the actual showcase, and now they're moving on to just like more general stuff probably not really doing any reveals anymore um okay. i'm not sure we can watch this for a little bit just to see where it goes and then if it yeah, gets if boring it's nothing. We can, yeah we, we can do a quick little wrap up and then call this another incredibly insanely frankly disgustingly successful episode of this show wow. 
filthy. Yeah, like obscene. How is this allowed on YouTube? Hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. This is like some kind of music video for all their games. Oh, is it set to Linkin Park? Uh, it's set to like someone rapping. Someone's okay. definitely rapping. It could be Mike Shinoda, in which case it would still be Linkin Park. Um, but yeah, oh, no. Sure. I'm reading the Twitch chat now. Man, yeah. that's chaotic. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like some of these reels, given their subject matter, get very close to being AMVs. Like, they're not that far away. Well, well, Kratos, oh, call it, well Kratos call it Trey's man all the time now. God, I hope so. And that was the PlayStation, PlayStation Showcase. Showcase. We've got more We've got updates more coming right now. I'm joined right by now. this guy. And I'm in fact joined okay, Herman Hulst. Than PlayStation yeah. Studios <laughs> Herman Hulst. Uh, Herman, really strong showing here from PlayStation Studios tonight. Oh, it's just GT7 awesome GT and a release date. And finally, it's coming in mm -hmm. March. GT7 is coming in oh, March. Hooray. And I don't think fans are going to be disappointed. You know, I, I, I love me a good and Polyphony have been working on them. game car. GT7 is we're pulling from <laughs> You're like a really <laughs> good franchise. Taking some game car. Features. Yeah. Yeah. Can't get enough of them. GT campaign. Yeah. I, I can prove this too by naming a lot of them. Like there's the, uh, so there's the red one. And then, then obviously the you have the, the one ahead of it. The there's the yellow guy. The I've the seen that one cars. too many times to count, frankly. Really, really and then, of course, the breaking variation additional car. I thought and you were so going to name like my four favorites, but like I have many more. Racer. Great. I thought you were going to name like to hear that about car games, but you just named that, car colors. <laughs> so that's certainly yeah, I mean, one direction. No, specific to take car it. models. On fire the last I, I'm well versed in this subject matter. Yeah. Oh, I see yeah. the viewership declining for this video. We can yeah, right. Tonight. <laughs> Yeah, what I like about the Gran Turismo games is they have like a big and diehard fan base. Like they sell well, but I've never met someone who's like, yeah, I'm a big Gran Turismo fan. Like on the basis of just those games alone, like like you said, stream viewership just like will decline or whatever. They, I, I don't know where that pocket of people who are really into Gran Turismo exists. But yeah, it's like, just dropping by 10,000. Yeah. And it's really evident tens of thousands of people are, are running away right now listening this yeah um, obviously i mean from our stream not from the really twitch stream nice we we definitely had tens of thousands of people oh, watching that, that oh yeah that's us yeah no uh yeah, yeah. there's like a lot of so car games up there, there like dirt 5 is one of them but mm -hmm. like i don't i didn't hear anyone say like oh my god i'm so glad dirt 5 is on the xbox series x i have to buy it now so. i know right <laughs> into Marvel Spider-Man 2 now. And eh. soon be raising big, I think you mean big Gran Turismo fans, as, action, as opposed to GTA. Family, yeah, big Gran Turismo fans never Spider leave the house. They just sit in their racing rig action. all day. You know what? Honestly, honestly, if I had one of those like crazy nice racing rigs, with, like the wheel and like a realistic chair and all that other stuff, I wouldn't mind that so much. I, I feel like those are low key, like a version of VR. We don't call them that, but they are basically VR. Hmm, that could be your take. <laughs> oh. Herman, what okay, can what can you tell us about Ragnarok? Many fa Just like many fans, I am invested in the relationship between Kratos and his son. We see the weird tension brewing. I can't wait. Alright, that's about it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I was really hoping that he was going to be like, what can you tell us about God of War? And then he's going to be like, nothing. Next. <laughs> exactly, basically nothing. And he basically j did do that. Yeah. It's like, that hey, point, I love it. <laughs> you know, I love it. That was... Him talking about God of War was like me talking about cars. Like, I am not convinced, my guy. You know one character's name. You're going to have to give me more than that. Mm. He knew Kratos' name. That's uh, one thing. Oh, he was playing both of the games on PS5 and 4. For oh. Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn, too. They, there's like a big controversy about this recently, right? Yeah, yeah. Where they they like said they weren't going to do the kind of simultaneous like people get both versions thing anymore. Mm. But then they went back on that specifically for Horizon because of the controversy. Is that correct? I wasn't paying well, super close attention. I yeah, this is the original then. Uh, no, I think it's like the update is on upgrades only ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell us about God of War? Never heard of it. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, oh, uh, Sony is like exclusive? No, I don't know what those are. No. Man, this game looks so good though. Like that, that was just graphically very, very nice. <laughs> Thanks for the update, Herman. We are joined by Eric. Thanks for the update, Santa Herman. Now stop holding your chin weirdly high. I wanted to check in with oh, you he was it? doing that. <laughs> yeah, he was like, and the other thing about Kratos that I like is that he's the guy from uh, Uncharted, is it? <laughs> but that's like his um, look. He's trying to say, like, I'm proud of who I am. So, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I guess oh. so. It just seems uncomfortable to me. Okay, he's the director for God of War, Ragnarok. Good for him. Oh, how did he get this job? Somebody said, do you want to direct this? He said, yes, why not? Oh. <laughs> I, well, you know what? Uh, with a heavy heart, I, I will step forward to also direct God of War. <laughs> I, I'll do it. It's going to be real rough, but it's all I can do for the community. Yeah, they have to really beg you to try. The important thing for us is to be able to get a um, they have to get a fresh perspective every time. Uh, but also, mm -hmm. you know, a fresh pair of um, you are really exhausted at the end of finishing one of these games. So you and then you, so you have to get someone else to do it, like this guy. Like this. <laughs> that's what he's... Wait, wait, really? <laughs> yeah, that's what he's like. He's like, I'm All tired. Right. This guy can do it for me. Uh, you know, I, I admire his candor. The designer in me wants to answer one way, but as a director, you have to answer a different You way. have to learn how to yeah, jettison yeah. your own profession, profession you which I'm sure Corey, Corey can understand. Sorry, I just got some bad news in chat. Apparently, Joe Molly's directing God of War, so. Oh, God. But I'm taking next. I get the next one. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight over this. Yeah. But, you know, from. We have to tell a heartfelt and epic story as father and son go on a journey and struggle with holding on to stuff and letting go of things. Wait, wait. Did they actually say holding on to stuff and letting go of things? <laughs> the because I thought for sure it would be about holding on to things and letting go of stuff. No, that's a very specific choice there. Yes. We, we have to have a game that feels very surprising and inevitable. Inevitable. It's like the Midwest Wait, slice of life. I, I'm sorry. Surprising and inevitable are at odds with one another. <laughs> I know. They, they are totally different concepts. I, I just I realized. Really vaguely, they're describing their game such that it makes no sense. We had to make it very boring, but also interesting, but also red, but also green, but also black, but also white. Yeah. Man, a lot to think about. So Ragnarok is going to be in here. We're going to cap off the North series. Prepare yourselves. Last game ended with a teaser for Thor. Is that Thor's voice that we just heard? That was definitely Thor's voice. Mm, Thor okay. is being played by Chris Hemsworth. Okay. No, you may know not. him. No, I don't know. He said something and I didn't hear the name. But it wasn't that. I you just you almost got me. Man. Oh, I it is very different from the hunky Australian that you know. Sorry, I interrupted you. What you're saying. Uh, dang. Oh, he's different from the that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, it's gonna be a red hair very young child Thor. Hmm. Hmm. And what about Odin? Odin's gonna be in there, right? Definitely. Yeah, sure. Definitely. He, I mean, Odin is the father of all realms. Of course, he'll be in there. We're having Mr. Richard Shift playing. Oh, he's Toby from the West Wing. West Wing. This is one that we never thought. Also, Chris Hemsworth, but as his character in Ghostbusters as Thor. What? He can only get Liam. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they got the worst hymns worth. <laughs> oh, oh no. It's a nightmare. Yeah, I only know him as Miley Cyrus's ex, but... You know, her most recent album is very good. Yeah. It is. Yeah. That album I, I love all of what we do. Let's make it special. We saw some new characters. What can you tell us about them? Mm-hmm. Are you talking about the little squid? 
Oh no, yes. you're talking about Tyr. <laughs> Tell me more about the squid. No, he didn't talk about the squid. Let's talk about Tyr. We talked a lot about him in 2018. We might as well show him to the people. And the last character. Oh, yeah. One of the last remaining giants. Hmm. Her story is pretty amazing. Her story is pretty amazing. Tyr is being played by Ben Prendergast. Um, who's been completely that absorbed is. from the role, even okay. though he is not. Yeah, I also don't know who that is. Tyrius. Um, and then the uh, anger boat is being played by a Leia. Yeah, I think there's some so actors that are like somewhat famous, but we just don't. They're not like household names. Amazing. Mm -hmm. She's one of the last giants. Yeah, like Liam there. Hemsworth. So, yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 hey, not even a household name in his own household. The other brothers are like, wait, which one are you again? Wait, we had another brother? I thought I was an only child. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that would have been completely amazing. And, you know, lastly, to our fans. We are fans of our fans, and I can't wait. And I cannot wait to watch hmm. our tweets. The message it's actually better that you can't hear it, because now I get to read all these. Yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying your, like, sporadic commentary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Corey, we haven't heard from you. So you're not directing, but what are you doing? What are you doing here, Corey? <laughs> oh, oh, you would like that, wouldn't you? You would like me to spill the beans, and I would tell you everything. But we're doing a bunch of stuff. All the things that we are doing, you're tempted. But I don't have anything I could talk about. Then okay. why even? Okay, whatever. Why are you even sitting? Here? Yeah, why? Why are you here? Why did they ask you that question? Okay. Oh, he says, Ragnarok, I was totally r off with the name of the game. I didn't realize. Oh. Yeah. I can't okay, wait. Okay, so he's referencing that. <laughs> yeah. What you just said before. Yeah. Okay, now they're done. Thank you, Eric. And next we have Ryan Treadwell. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. I don't... What is this one for? Do we care? Oh, it's Star Wars. Oh, it's the remake. Okay, I am interested in this. I am quite interested in to, in the extent to which they're remaking it. Because it's kind of, okay. you know, a crazy yeah. game at this point. Like, it makes way more sense to remake this than, like, Alan Wake. Yeah. It's a cr complete remake of the Star Wars story. We are rebuilding from the ground up and in maintaining the integrity of the story. So, All okay. right. How much of a remake it's answering your exact question. Like, what is this remake? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I figured it was probably a pretty substantial overhaul. Because the, the, the old game is, you know, very old at this point. It came out in... When was that? That was, like, the mid-2000s, right? Star Wars KOTOR came out... Oh, wow. More recently than I thought. How did that come out in 2011? Hmm. It's only been a decade? <laughs> Man, only it a feels decade. like the MMO based on this series came out a decade ago. Hmm. Wow. I mean, time is not real anymore, you know? That's true. Um, but yeah, so he's saying the Fidelity got updated. And then these two companies are partnered very well. Lucas mm -hmm. and Aspire. Yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing they're not going to show any actual gameplay. Because if they... We're going to they already would have during the showcase yeah the right team to do this project but yeah There's... yeah it was original xbox era how is that that can't have been no never mind they i'm i'm incorrect about that release date i think that it just is wrong on uh, a portion of google yeah, there we go. 2003. Duh. Okay. It's like, there's no way that came out in 2011. Do not try to trick me, Google. I know where you live. It's San Francisco-ish. Yeah. Okay, they're just talking about their team. Right, of course. We have the new, we have good people that we like that. Great. <laughs> yeah, we have a team made up of bad people who we hate. They've been trying to ruin the game at every turn. Uh, we've been holding them off as best as we can. We are running out of supplies. If you could send any assistance, we really appreciate it. Things are dire. Yeah. And he's like, all right, cool, dude. Yeah. All right, I, I wish I could help you, dude. Bye. Love to hear it. Good luck. All right. <laughs> Sounds great, man. Um, yeah, that's all we got. Okay, all we have time for. Bye. <laughs> and yeah, and that's it. Muffled screaming sounds in the background. <laughs> oh no, four Star Wars teams. But yeah, I all think right. that was so it. Those are the most interesting games.
that I th well, I, I guess I wouldn't mind hearing more about Wolverine. Maybe they'll do that next. Or maybe I thought the stream was over. over. I closed oh. it. <laughs> there we go. No, it, it is over. Okay, wow. all right. All right then. All right. And now it says to join us Thursday, September 9th. Wait a minute, that's today. Oh, it's doing the thing. Yeah, it's just showing the kind of splash screen. Yeah. Huh. I I wonder if that was really supposed to be the end. Or if they had, a, if they made a tiny boo boo. Oh, maybe you, it's because you couldn't hear him, but he said, "Thanks for joining us." Bye. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> Thanks for joining us. Bye. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. No more. Yeah. All right. Well, dope. Then let's move into the final uh, portion of this especially long episode, relative to the last episode, which is also especially long. Um, oh no, we've set a standard. We're gonna have to meet it every week. Um. But yeah, let's. Yeah, you know how there's like news. We mm -hmm. we can like break it down. Oh, also, people are leaving. Stop leaving. Oh, Why are you leaving? That. There's you're still more. That. You're doing that. Okay. Unlike okay. the cool. Sony, what? Oh, I I didn't realize. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike the Sony conference, we are not going to just disappoint you by abruptly ending. I'm going to drag it out as much as humanly possible. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Um, but also yeah. it's like 5 p.m. So, I am going to go through these things fairly quickly, hopefully as best as I can. Um, news from this week. One thing that we covered that I found interesting that I haven't really had time to read that much into because I had to do this show is that um, Epic Games is shutting down the House Party app to focus on its metaverse. Um, yeah. yeah. I have a lot of thoughts on this one. I mean, that House Party, when it was acquired by Epic Games like two years ago for 30, uh, reportedly $35 million, everybody was shocked because they're like, okay, this is an app where you just pop in and you play, you go on video with your friends and you maybe play like a really casual game. It's nothing like Fortnite and like what's Epic doing here? And now we finally know, like two years later, we finally know it was hmm. all going to be swallowed up all along. So, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, that's very interesting too, because what like the a, a couple of years ago or a handful of years ago, like the metaverse was not a buzzword yet, and so it's interesting that Epic has kind of been well, I guess in 2019, it's not that long ago, but still that Epic has been kind of planning for this long to uh, acquire things and roll them into its metaverse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we know like the other things they own, like you know Fall Guys and like I. Art station, for instance, and so it's like, what will come next? What will the vision of the metaverse that they have look like? I so. I want the metaverse to be comprised mainly of Fall Guys, such that <laughs> like everything that you do, every task you try to accomplish, is accompanied by a bunch of obstacles. That I mean, oh, realistically, no. you're not going to make it past. You're going to oh, fall God. into a big hole or something. Yeah, you're trying to go to the bank, and then you just fall into some jelly, and you, you can't get off anymore. Right. And then a bunch of like other little guys go to the bank and you're like, wait, no, I had to do, I had plans today. And then that's pretty much it for you. That sucks. Yeah. It's a bummer. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a really cool thing. Uh, the CEO, I've interviewed her a couple of times and she never, um, never hinted at this, but she's always like, I'm so happy we have the same vision of the metaverse. And now I finally know what she means. Yeah. Well, Good for them, I guess. Oh yeah, Fall. Oh man, no, that's a great idea. Fall Guys concerts. Yeah, that can like, happen. The the problem, in my opinion, with Fortnite concerts is that they like disable your ability to really take harm. There's no danger to them. Every time I want to, I'm I'm somebody who like I'm very into like metal and hardcore music. Every time I go to a concert, I want to think I might die. And so like, if that's not present in virtual metaverse concerts, then I'm not going. If I feel oh, safe. Man. Ugh. Yeah, I feel a... safe. There's a upcoming, um, some upcoming rock concerts. I don't know if they're under embargo, and I like, lost track of if they're under embargo. Or not. But yeah, there are some concerts like that. Um, probably, yeah. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no video game has yet to successfully replicate like mosh pits. So somebody needs to get on that. Oh man, you have to play Adventure Quest 3D because there has been. So. Oh, 3D. They're Man, just like it's like an insane type of thing. Does not sound like a real game. That sounds no. like something you made up. No, no, no. I grew up playing Adventure Quest, and now it's become Adventure Quest 3D on Steam, which is a free game. And they have like I'm not an advertisement master. I'm not sponsored, but there's mm -hmm. like a like an in sync band performing, and then looking behind you, there's some monsters attacking you. So you have to fight off the monsters while you're also dancing to the concert. It's a really good experience. Mm -hmm. to try it. You know what? That does sound kind of neat. Maybe I will try it. We'll see. 
Yeah. Excuse me. But yeah, let's see. So other things that happened this week. Um, you're never going to believe this. The white guy company appointed another white guy. Oh, oh the French white guy company. Sorry. I should have been more specific. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Somebody just said Adventure Quest 3D had the corn concert. That's really funny. Yes. Man. Yes. I, I can't even really think about like what a virtual corn concert would be like. I, I've never personally been a fan of their stuff. I dated somebody who was, though, like many, like in 2013. It was like the last person I ever would have expected to be an avid fan of corn, but nonetheless, um, that's neither here nor there, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so Ubisoft has appointed another French white guy to take over the position of a French white guy who was removed from the position or left or whatever it is he did um, because of, you know, allegations of sexual misconduct, which Ubisoft has been struggling with for the past year plus. Uh, the the general kind of response from Ubisoft employees to moves like this has been that Ubisoft has not done a super good job of actually substantially changing things. And here's an example of why. He has basically like, you know, this is a guy who is also the company for 20 years, who obviously has worked with, and I would imagine is friends with a lot of the people who were, you know, responsible for various forms of misconduct within the workplace. So that that's not ideal. And um, a better Ubisoft put out a statement in relation to this. Uh, yeah, let's see. There's no ex clear expression of the creative process, and there's a shocking lack of diversity in the VPs. Uh, mm -hmm. We acknowledge the hiring of, how do you say her name? Bio Jade Adam Granger. I, I just, it can't be Bio Jade, right? That sounds like a sci fi <laughs> Wait, character. Is that real? Well, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's some sort of like, is it French? I don't know. But anyway. Oh, uh, but not Bio like... Jade? <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, that's either correct or offensive. And <laughs> I guess we'll never know. Um, Somebody in the chat quickly tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Like really sounded out too. Um, but yeah, let's see. Anyway, but not much progress has been made beyond that, especially given the two additional VPs were meant to be hired. Currently, as it stands, the creative team at Ubisoft is composed of white people who are of uniform cultural backgrounds. And I mean, yeah, so that doesn't work on a number of levels. One of them is that, again, Ubisoft has been dealing with a number of far reaching problems in regards to harassment and misconduct within its studios. Uh, not just any single studio either, pretty much across the board. Uh, the most recent one that's been dinged for this kind of thing is Ubisoft Singapore. But before that, a handful of other studios also were. And so then on top of that, the other issue you have is that Ubisoft generally tries to at least purport to make culturally diverse games. And when you have those games being made by white people, you're going to end up with a pretty limited set of perspectives and you're going to have a lot of blind spots. So Ubisoft mm -hmm. is really not doing itself any favors here in any regard. Yeah, I've had friends tell me like, oh, they like Assassin's Creed like Valhalla or like, you know, a uh, game set in like a white setting, but they don't really necessarily like the other games that are set in like Asia because it just seems a little bit like there there's something missing there. I don't know, but mm -hmm. that's what I've heard from other people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like they they're just not necessarily going to be able to deliver on those settings as well because that's not their background. And I mean, like, yeah, it just, it, it seems like a pretty simple thing. But at the same time, uh, nepotism is a hell of a drug. Mm. And yeah. more fun studio news because, you know, things have been going really well at video game studios recently. Um, yeah, actually. So there was a union survey that basically leaked this week um, from Paradox talking about a culture mistreatment is probably a strong term i actually uh I, I interviewed a union rep about partially about this earlier today and he sort of cautioned that some of the reporting on this he he likes this version of the article a lot he, he was like this is the closest to being kind of accurate to what we found mm -hmm. and that couches our findings pretty well but basically uh the paradoxes union um conducted a survey of various elements of their workplace and kind of along a lot of different lines, but found that there is a lot of, quote unquote, various sorts of mistreatment at the company. Um, and some of the results are pretty eye opening, like results claim that 69% of women and 33% of respondents had experienced mistreatment during their time at the company. Um, one thing that the union rep pointed out is that a lot of people equate this stat um, to it being entirely sexual harassment. And he was like, no, that's not the case. A lot of it is also just like, 
um, you know, women being shouted down when they contribute ideas or like <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, yeah. 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 I find that a lot in my reporting as well, because I, as I talk to a lot of uh, employees across different companies and the industry, a lot of people, some people don't have a story of like, oh, I've been like um, assaulted or, or groped or anything, but it's more like, yeah, just like being talked over or like not making enough money or like having a, a boss that is kind of toxic, but, but even reporting them doesn't do anything. So a lot of these different kinds of trends, like it's all, these, these are all workplace issues, but they not, may not necessarily be like another sexual harassment story as well. Right. Well, yeah. And I mean, they, they're all part, they, they're all parts of the, of a similar culture, right? Like, I mean, a, a company that does not respect women is both going to shout them down in meetings. And then also like that just kind of creates an environment that is more permissive of harassment and other issues like that. than one where like, for example, if a woman says, Hey, this guy's being creepy to me, they're just going to believe her. And, hopefully do something about it mm -hmm. um but yeah so basically the the other element of this that was worth um couching is that it was a survey it wasn't like this bigger kind of journalistic investigation um mm -hmm. or bigger investigation in general along the lines of what has happened at activision blizzard um it, it was a survey that they gave to like union members and so yeah the the basic idea underlying it according to the representative that i talked to is that they wanted? They knew there was a problem. Um, there's been previous reporting on the problem, as RPS points out. They did their own investigation last year, not long after the union was formed. Um, and so the union wanted to identify the scope of the problem so as to be able to bring that to management and say, we need to do something about this. Like, let, let's actually work toward resolving this issue instead of just having another, you know, kind of standard video, video game industry workplace. And so that's what they're hoping to do, you know, I, yeah. the, oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah. I just think it's even impressive that they have a union to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's also notable. Um, yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they have a union in part because of the reason that everybody in Sweden has unions and that <laughs> Sweden is a very like union run place in terms of, uh, labor issues. The, the, the rep that I was talking to is telling me that actually there are some labor laws in Sweden of all places that are even weaker than the ones in the U S mm. it's just that they have unions almost at every company. So as mm. to kind of balance that out. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, uh, the kind of thing that they take as a hopeful sign is that paradox is planning to have a third party audit. Um, and I, I was like, well, you know, in America, what that means is that the company is going to bring in like, you know, a, a law firm that represents their interests and that will do no actual work to weed out bad actors. And the rep was like, no, no, that's not generally how it works here. This is actually going to hopefully be productive. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. So we will see how all that works out, but it would be nice for at least one of these video game workplaces that is uh, dealing with tremendous cultural issues to make substantial change because that also gives other people a blueprint for how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what other things have happened. I, I just wanted to touch on this one really fast because it's amusing to me. Um, advertising standards have told the Star Citizen developers to make it clear that for sale uh, concept ships don't exist in game yet. Because Star Citizen is just wild to mm -hmm. me in that mm -hmm. it is a game that is like after more than a decade in the making, like barely complete. And it's sort of just like a series of taped together tech demos at this point, but they um, make a ton of money selling video game spaceships that aren't actually in the game yet. They, they're <laughs> more like, we, you will be able to use these someday, maybe, if they get there. Okay. And, I definitely, oh, uh, I definitely yeah, yeah. have a friend who's like a super big Star Citizen fan. I'm pretty sure he has also bought one of these ships if, if they're already on sale. And yeah, just like waiting decades maybe for this game to finally finish. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's on the pedigree of Chris Roberts, who um, made some classic space games and leveraged that into Star Citizen, which is this massively ambitious game that wants to be everything for everyone and like no game that has aspired to that has ever actually pulled it off so we'll see but in any case um let's see yeah i just really like that in advertising standards 
board told them like, hey, you've got to oh. actually tell people that these games don't exist in the or these ships don't exist in the game yet. Yeah, advertising rules. There are a lot of advertising rules. I studied mm-hmm. advertising and I was almost going to go into it. And there's just like when I was uh, doing like copywriting, like in her, like you cannot state something that is not true about this product because then they're going to come after us. So we could say like, oh, it's bouncy if it's bouncy mm-hmm. but if it's not bouncy then don't say it yeah so it, that doesn't surprise me but it's kind of funny it's yeah for sure yeah let's see going to some other things i don't really care that much about that one what is this oh yeah this is just a story that i've been kind of following over the years because i am interested in you know things that i guess result from like streaming and that culture mm-hmm. uh Taekwon, i think is how you say his name um he he was a really popular streamer around the time of like Fortnite blowing up and then he just kind of disappeared for like two years. And he, uh, even at the time, was talking about health issues that he had. And so he, he and um, a, a streamer he often partners with, um, Hamlins, are actually finally like making a comeback mm-hmm. after just being totally gone. Like this rarely happens with influencers. They just disappeared off the internet for the most part. I mean, I think they like sporadically tweeted and maybe up- updated their Instagrams, but just stopped streaming, even though they had like, multi-million people followings wow yeah and so i guess part of that is that daekwon like his health issues were just too bad yeah he said i was sick for five to six years from 19 pretty much to 26 and he said yeah he had lung collapses which prevented me from doing what he wanted to no sports nothing athletic he, wow. he couldn't dance the way he wanted to because if he twisted a certain way too hard he could make his lung collapse and put him out of commission for a while Jeez. Yeah. But yeah, he said um that he's happy that he's over that stuff. Um and he's generally genuinely happy now because he can do the things he used to want to. However, the story ends on kind of like a question raising note, which is um that uh let's see, he suffered a serious knee injury while take while taking on an American Ninja Warrior training course. What? And so he's now gotta like rehab that. That's a but real yeah, thing I mean, that people can take. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, those are actually super popular. They're like entire gyms built around American Ninja Warrior and that idea. Okay. Um, okay. I must have missed those memo. All right. Um, I, I will say American Ninja Warrior is the best show to put on and then like take a nap to. Yeah. Not train to. Okay. Oh no, definitely not. No, just like nothing that matters actually happens, and you just watch people run a fun obstacle course, hmm. and then you're like, okay, I've got this, and then eventually you just go to sleep. Yeah. That's certainly gonna sounds drowsy let's see oh yeah this is i am amused by this so train rex is one of the bigger streamers on twitch at the moment Mm -hmm. and he's been popular for a while but the way that he really catapulted himself into the next stratosphere of popularity is by gambling on twitch and by becoming one of the biggest personalities to do that um, and there's been a lot of questions around like the ethics of gambling on Twitch because it's a platform with a lot of young users. And so are you basically advertising gambling to them? And then on top of that, you have gambling companies and online casinos getting in on this and sponsoring streamers. And um, in some cases, like giving them currency to work with. So it's not even indicative of like streamers spending their own money. Um, Trainrex claims he does spend his own money. Um, but at the same time, now even he's reached the point after months of people being like, hey, you probably shouldn't do this, of being like, hey, I don't know about this. Um, yeah, he was like, yeah, he, let's see, on it, September 3rd. I've always been on the crossroads of this gambling stuff. Okay. Um, but now I'm at a point where it's no longer at a crossroads. I'm worried. Um, I'm worried is there weird stuff going on. Um, I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible and take just as much risk as the regular user would, but I'm worried about attaching my name to anything. It's like, you've been doing this for months, my guy. The, yeah, kind of really a, reminds me of, oh, um, yeah, go ahead. The, just like the FaZe clan members who were like sponsoring uh, big cryptocurrency things. And then eventually they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm doing this. I, but it's it's also like, hmm, you did know what you were doing. Right, right. Yeah, like you did know. And I, yeah, it, it feels sometimes like people are slowly backing out of these things. They're like, oh, I've seen the error of my ways now. It's time to, uh, time to move on to something else. But I got to make it look like I definitely, you know, I'm doing this because it's the right thing to do and not because I realized that this is like that I got caught, basically. I don't know. It, yeah. It's just funny to me. To, I, I cannot, um, I, I cannot 
speak to train wrecks actual motivations it's just a weird time to finally be doing this yeah i am um, yeah you should go back to well i guess it's already old now but you should go back to his among us stream mm -hmm. yeah shouldn't everybody <laughs> um let's see <laughs> sudden onset sudden onset conscious syndrome exactly um yeah <laughs> you know strangest thing so many people are catching it these days <laughs> um but yeah let's see oh yeah just a small thing but like uh just as a follow-up to some things i talked about last week um twitch is i i would say that this headline overstates it reveals a plan to combat hate raids um they more just like updated one of their pages um with like some resources to combat targeted attacks uh these are admittedly not as good as the ones that the community has put forward the, these are things that people could have been doing all along um, but Twitch at least has like an actual direct resource around this now. They also sent out an email to streamers being like, hey, we're sorry about how this is unfolding. Our work is ongoing. We can't reveal more because that would give bad actors tools with which to work. Mm -hmm. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. Nothing too new. But they at least did something in reaction to a day off Twitch. So that's worth kind of pointing attention in the direction of. Yeah. Um, let's see. Now on to dumb stuff. It's finally time for the the very silly portion of the proceedings um to begin so oh. I don't, when you were playing did what? you find this wait M -preg easter egg um, oh yeah also M -preg really... easter egg is our band name oh god no <laughs> No. Oh my god. Okay, well, you have to be the lead singer, so you have to like be the face yeah, yeah. of that name. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm down. Oh god. Okay, so yeah. Psychonauts 2. I I I like almost speedrun it. I was like, I just came back from vacation. I need to finish this, but I mm -hmm. don't know if I saw this. What is it? What? Yeah. What? Yeah, so it seems like Adventure Time creator Pendleton Ward is involved. Oh, okay. And uh yeah, there's an Easter egg where like, yeah, so this is a clip of it it's an entirely it's a little animated thing oh and then like basically well, raz is pregnant uh okay d d does our audience know what mpreg means mm, should we explain uh, so for those <laughs> who don't know i mean you're on the internet you probably have heard of mpreg stuff but basically it's when characters like get pregnant and it's kind of a fetish um and it's yeah i anyway. just have to make you explain <laughs> so it's great uh but yeah i don't I, I think i missed this part so you have to go back to hollis oh so this is like it takes place like one of the first levels of the game mm -hmm. uh oh and then you enter the maternity ward and then you have to take telekinesis <laughs> to pick up the giant pen it, oh it just had, like, yeah so i think the basic idea is it was like some sort of throwaway idea that maybe pen ward had for the beginning of psychonauts 2 because it just had like a little title thing and it said at the bottom like pregnant raz is a great opening idea oh, in the actual video yeah like if we go back to this oh and it's all a pun for his name yeah Lord. man this this guy <laughs> uh, so yeah that's a real thing that's actually in psychonauts too wow well there's a lot of like like crazy stuff in in that game but um i think this might take the cake i mean there's also like a competition a food competition where everyone you like feed these judges and at the mm -hmm. end they barf on you and you have to uh, like jump away from their barf and then and you have to then fit you get pregnant from yeah. the barf <laughs> <God>. <laughs> no oh my god we're making these jokes on the internet okay well there's also like <laughs> you have to <laughs> dig out strawberries and like eggs and like ingredients from their barf to make more dishes with which oh. you feed them again and then they great. explode ultimately yeah it's, it's all right game. i'm into it yeah you have to play it it's awesome i i will i'm gonna play psychonauts one first because i never played that okay yeah they're both but on yeah. theme i think let's see um oh yeah so this is i didn't actually even look at this one i just want to see what the achievement name is because steam achievement names can be upset long um according to cookie clicker and yes, indeed, that does look very long. Let's see. I'm going to read the entire thing. Okay. Um, here, let's let's see if we can make this a little bigger. Here we go. Okay. So there is a an achievement in the Steam version of Cookie Clicker, a clicker game that's been around for a while but recently got released on Steam, and it is called "There's Really No Hard Limit to How Long These Achievement Games Can Be." And to be quite honest, I'm rather curious to see how far we can go. 
Adolphus W. Green, 1844 to 1917, started as the principal of the Groton School in 1864. By 1865, he became second assistant librarian at the New York Mercantile Library. From 1867 to 1869, he was promoted to full librarian. <laughs> okay. From 1869 to 1873, he worked for Evarts, South Maid, and Choit, a law yeah. firm, firm co-founded by William M. Everts. Charles Ferdinand, <laughs> Seth, holy God, these names. I, I hate that I committed to this. And Joseph Hodges, Joey, Choate. I don't know. It sounds too similar to a don't word that I should Don't say that word. Don't say uh, that. <laughs> no. he, he was admitted to the New York State Bar Association in 1873. Anyway, how's your day been? <laughs> and you get that achievement for baking 10 sextillion cookies per second. Dude, why would I care about this? Random librarian. Thanks so much for this yeah. <laughs> trivia I'll never use in my life. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'm I'm sure as a result of this game, the number of hits on this person's Wikipedia page has gone way up recently. <laughs> no. <laughs> After this, I'm good. I don't ever have to look him up again. So well. But uh and yeah, need the time back for my life. Like I've just lost like a good minute <laughs> listening to you read that. Oh yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> I mean, on the upside, I can always claim to be the the possessor of that time now. So that's neat. Um, the last thing that I wanted to end on today. Wait, actually, this is the second to last thing. Okay. The the thing that one of the things I wanted to end on, if the page will load, is um, a a good reminder. And on this, the day of the Matrix Resurrection, Resurrections, whatever trailer, um, it is canon that Morpheus is dead, and it's canon specifically because of the Matrix Online a short-lived MMORPG <laughs> that for a brief moment resumed the story, like took over the storyline after the movies ended. And so everything that happened in that game was considered canon up to and including um, Morpheus played by Lawrence Fishburne's kind of very, not that anticlimactic, but kind of anticlimactic death. The, the way in which he died was just kind of like, let's see, do we have a video on here? Yes. Okay. So he like just basically got like tracked down by um, th one of the main enemies and kind of the ongoing plot line of the Matrix Online, <laughs> he could like turn into a fly. Oh, and so, looks so funny. Yeah, so he's like, "Wait a minute! Oh no!" And like runs but, away, and this guy shows up, and he's like, "Shit! Shit! 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 Shit!" Excellent graphics. And he like leaps over a thing. Oh yeah, and there's a bomb, I guess. Like, there's a lot happening, and the bomb goes off. And, you know. Great. Yeah. Seems like it's all fine. He runs away. <laughs> and then here we go. So Morpheus walks down this alleyway. And this is like the anticlimactic part. Hello. <laughs> and that's oh, it. He's no. Dead. He thought he got away. Yeah. But then. And after everything that happened in the Matrix movies, Morpheus just gets shot in an alleyway. Oh man, and he's yeah. not satisfied. He's gonna throw a couple more bullets in there, man. Wasting yeah, bullets. wasting bullets, just like you were talking about earlier. Yeah. But yeah, so that's it. That was the death of that was the at least at the time the canon death of Morpheus. Are they going to adhere to that? It's hard to say. But it was like a whole big event in the game, <laughs> and players could participate in it. And that like you had to hunt down the person who killed him, and there's an in-game funeral with like in-game admins role-playing as characters from the movies and wow. like actually players could directly interact with them and stuff like the matrix online bit off way more than it could chew but it was a cool game wow yeah, I, yeah. i'm sorry i missed that i was really into mmos at that time too i don't know i guess i was too busy with maple story to play this one but mm. <laughs> yeah well you know very similar games so it's understandable <laughs> yeah um but yeah, so we're going to see what happens there. It's notable that in promotional materials for the new Matrix movie so far, we haven't really seen any of Morpheus. So hmm. could be canon. Yeah. We'll see. And then finally, I just want to leave everybody with the best Twitter account that I've found in quite some time. It is Fraser looking at video games. <laughs> Here he is looking at the PlayStation Showcase. I hope he enjoyed it. <laughs> That's just the beginning, though, because see, this, this is almost plausible. <laughs> but the remainder of this account is very much not. His I friends are looking at this village from uh, Bloodborne. Oh. Yeah. 
I like to say follow you, but you don't follow them. But anyway. well, they the account's brand new. Actually, it's not <laughs> it joined September. That's eh, fine. Anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, here's Fraser watching the Matrix. See, brought it back oh. around. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Fraser looking at video. Oh, retweeting himself in the media. Yeah, yeah. Here's Fraser looking at Bright Falls. Oh. In time for Alan Wake. That's perfect. And then, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, looking at Among Us. I think this one's very clever. <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right. Hey, man, you're falling into space. Yeah. And Fraser looking at Bioshock. <laughs> and instead of arriving in the bathosphere, he arrove in his entire apartment. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, looking at C City 17. This one is this one is really something. The, wow. the kind of vibe of his, his apartment almost fits City 17. So, like, it feels more plausible, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, I also have to appreciate this guy's Photoshop skills. Like, whoever is photoshopping all this, it's really good. Yeah, right. New Donk City. Oh, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. One of the best theme songs in video games. <laughs> and, of course, last but not least, looking at the opening to Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> and that's oh, the first post a, on the account. Just a giant man. Uh-huh. I'm not sure why I'm so big. And so, once again, I think that, you know, that's the perfect place to call it, right? We're ending at the beginning, dot, 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 of Skyrim. Maybe I should just try to end every episode on some sort of reference to the beginning of Skyrim. Every week. Yeah. Just make it more and more, make the, make the joke more and more played out until it becomes funny again. Um, anyway, thank you to everybody who tuned in today for this, gosh, how long did we go? Like almost two and a half hours or something? Anyway. Yeah. Thank you for tuning into this very long stream that was about all sorts of good stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, you know, like, comment, and subscribe or whatever. I've never said that unironically, and I'm not going to start today. Um, but in any case, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week at around this time. We started closer to like 3.30 today because of some logistical issues. Normally, we start at 4, go until 6, 6.30. Um, but yeah, in any case, thanks for tuning in. Thank you to Alana for joining us. Shannon, thank you for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> until next time, see ya. Bye.